Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disown. In this video, I am going to see how much faster the RTX 3080 is when it's running in an external graphics dock like my Razer Core X compared to the GTX 1080 in my laptop. Now, this Pascal GPU is three and a half years and two generations old. In my 17 inch Clevo P870 TM, it runs at about 180 watts, so it should be similar to a desktop 1080, but it does perform the same as a 2080 Max Q or a 115 watt RTX 2070. Now the CPU in my laptop is the desktop i9-9900K running at 4.7 GHz to rule out as best as possible any CPU bottleneck. Now I also throw in data with my desktop RTX 2080 in the same Razer Core X enclosure to see how it compares as well. Now I tested at both 1920x1080 and 2560x1440 which will be the most two common resolutions being used. And as a baseline, I also run the test using the RTX 3080 in my desktop, which uses an i9-10900K CPU. So first up is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where I use the inbuilt benchmark with the ultra-high preset. Now the green bars show 1080p and the blue bars 1440p. The desktop 3080 is at the top and is some 115% faster than the 3080 in the eGPU at 1080p and 110% faster at 1440p. I suspect that even at 40 gigabits per second, the bandwidth for Thunderbolt 3 is the limiting factor. The RTX 3080 is only 20% faster than the 2080 in the eGPU, which is far behind what we would expect in a desktop situation. The GTX 1080 in the laptop was 35% faster at 1080p and 17% faster at 1440p. So let's look at Battlefield 5, where I use DX11 Ultra Settings and playing the Rotterdam map. The desktop is CPU limited at 1080p, as both resolutions are at 154fps. Now the desktop is 71% faster than the eGPU counterpart, so again, the Thunderbolt 3 solution takes a huge hit. At 1080p, the 3080 is only 10% faster than the 2080 in the eGPU, so if you do have a 1080p monitor, it makes no sense spending the extra money on the 3080. At 1440p, now that gap does grow to 26%, so that is a little bit more respectable. But the GTX 1080 laptop is only 5% behind the 3080 in the eGPU at 1440p, which is a great showing. At 1080p, the GTX 1080 beats it out easily, and the desktop 3080 is only 33% faster at this resolution, which is amazing. Now for Death Stranding, I used an early part of the game using very high settings, but I didn't use DLSS. Now if you are using a 1080p monitor, we see a similar situation as we did in Battlefield 5, although this time the desktop 3080 is 62% faster than the GTX 1080 laptop. The eGPU limits performance again, and as you can see, even at 1440p, the GTX 1080 and the 3080 in the eGPU are basically the same. 87 FPS is what we will see with the GTX 1660 Ti laptop, and even the 67 FPS using uh, the 2080 is pretty much on par with a laptop using the GTX 1060. So I only advise using an eGPU if your laptop GPU is not sufficiently strong enough, perhaps a minimum of a GTX 1050 Ti. Now bear in mind, I am using a fast CPU in the laptop. For example, in Far Cry New Dawn, using the inbuilt benchmark with ultra settings, I saw 87 FPS at 1440p using the 3080 in the eGPU. But when I tested the Alienware M15R3 with the i7-10750H, I only got 75 FPS. So, so in all likelihood, you will see a lower performance depending on what your CPU is. The GTX 1080 laptop performs the same as the eGPU 3080. At 1080p, you might as well just stick with the 2080 in the eGPU as the 3080 is wasted. Look at how well the GTX 1080 does against the desktop 3080. At 1080p, it's only 24% faster, and at 1440p, it's 33% faster. Now this Clevo is a beast. We see the same with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The i7-10750H was about 10% behind when using the 9900K. This time I used ray tracing to show how much better it runs on the RTX cards compared to the GTX 1080. This time the 3080 in the eGPU is 168% faster than the 1080 at 1440p and even the 2080 is 70% faster. So as we see more ray tracing games you'll see a good benefit using an RTX card even in an eGPU. Ghost Recon Wildlands 
I use the inbuilt benchmark tool using ultra settings. Now this is a tough benchmark and even the desktop 3080 only gets 82 FPS at 1440p. But again, the eGPU severely limits performance. We see nearly half the frame rate and the GTX 1080 laptop still beats the 3080 eGPU by at least 16%. I also use the inbuilt benchmark from Metro Exodus, this time using DX11 Ultra settings. The RTX 2080 in the eGPU really struggled here, not even reaching 30 FPS. The eGPU 3080 is playable, but there is no way I would spend $700 on a graphics card just to get about 50 FPS. The GTX 1080 is similar to the eGPU 3080 at 1440p, but at least the desktop is 90% faster. Finally, I tested Star Wars Battlefront 2 using DX11 Ultra settings. Even at 1440p, the GTX 1080 beat out the eGPU 3080 by 15%, which in turn is 20-25% to faster than the RTX 2080. So here is the summary at 1080p using the eGPU 3080 as the baseline. The desktop 3080 was 88% faster, so that is a big performance hit due to the Thunderbolt 3 bandwidth. The GTX 1080 laptop was 16% faster. And if we take out that ray tracing test, that jumps it to 26%. So that is a fantastic performance for a three and a half year old GPU. Even compared to the desktop 3080, we are only talking a 52% difference at 1080p because the 3080 becomes CPU limited at that resolution. At 1440p, the desktop 3080 sees the same performance increase. It is really hard to justify spending $799 on the 3080 and using it in an eGPU. It really is. The GTX 1080 laptop performs about the same as the 3080 eGPU at 1440p. Now remember, this laptop is on par with the 2080 Max-Q, which is used in many 15-inch laptops. So personally, I would rather pick one of those up over the using an eGPU solution. This time, at high resolution, the desktop 3080 is 80% faster than the GTX 1080, which is more in line with what we would expect. But still, for a GPU that is two generations behind, this is still very good, and it shows there is life in the old dog yet. Thank you for watching. If you liked my video, consider subscribing. Bye now.